That was Congressman Doug Collins. He's the House Judiciary Committee ranking member, and he joins me right now live. And Congressman, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, I'll tell you, you had to get him to clarify things. What was your reaction to the hearing yesterday? Well, I think the reaction to the hearing was, is, is, number one, we learned nothing new. In fact, hopefully this is the final chapter that the uh, Democrats can finally say we put Mueller to rest. We now know that it was not everything that we wanted. In fact, we can actually, especially in that clip that you just played, we now can put collusion and conspiracy to rest. There's no more Democrats can run to a camera and say there's collusion in plain sight, there's conspiracy this. He put that to rest completely yesterday, and that is what uh, needs to happen. And then he also took on the issues of obstruction, and when, he, and when the Democrats tried to lay out obstruction, he said, I disagree with your theory. So I think when we look at it, this was a complete uh, just ending of the page is my hope that the Democrats will now turn to actual things that we have to listen, listen to, and that is how to fix this country. But then the one thing he didn't, and this is something you and I have talked about a lot, he would not talk about the origins. He would not talk about things that were in the report, such as the Steele dossier, the other issues there. That's what we're going to see from the Inspector General and Mr. Durham coming up this fall. Well, that's a real head scratcher. I mean, how do you do an investigation about Russia meddling when you don't actually look at the dossier, which was as a collection of, uh, of nonsense written by Fusion GPS uh, with the help of Russians trying to meddle. Well it was very amazing to me some things that he didn't uh, know. Like he had acted as if he had never heard of Fusion GPS. He had never actually heard of, of Glenn Sampson. It really goes to really what I believe has happened here over the past two years was is they went down a path. We would had uh, investigators who had a, a seemingly a bent toward this president, uh, against this president, because this president, they didn't like him. I and mean, we go back to what we've talked about many times, the uh, corrupt cabal of Strzok, Page, Comey, how this all got started. And what we're actually seeing is, is a revelation. At the, at the end of the day, nothing was here. Somebody asked me, what did I learn yesterday? I said, nothing that I did not read in the report three months ago. This is what was sad about yesterday. So um, the question I always ask you when we talk is, where's the accountability? Do you believe that we will see accountability for that group of people who did, in fact, put their finger on the scale, try to stop Donald Trump, and then lie about it? I believe we will, and I think that's why we now look forward to the Inspector General's report and, and the issue of the FISA abuse on American citizens. This is what should ring true. I don't care what n political name you put after your name, partisan uh, is ship you want to have. You should never want a Department of Justice that goes to a secret court and actually uh, takes out warrants on American citizens, and especially with the flimsy reasons that we know that they had. What's amazing to me is Andrew McCabe goes on TV. He's actually being on another uh, network. He actually goes on to try and rehabilitate himself. He was right in the middle of this with McCabe and Comey and Strzok and Page. This is something that needs to be brought out. And Mr. Durham is looking into this as well. This is why the American people do not need to lose sight, because this is what is important right now. You know, Congressman, you know what I find stunning? I mean, Peter Strzok, and all of his efforts to stop Donald Trump, not only should he face charges of trying to obstruct by, by lying and putting his finger on the scale, but also by putting national security uh, at risk for the country. Because now, you know what's been outed? All the FBI sources and methods. We now know how the FBI operates. They, they, they will put informants on you. They will use honeypots. They will bring together intel uh, uh, executives from around the world. I'm talking Halper, Downer, uh, Miftshood. So now we know the FBI's sources and methods, they've been outed because of Peter Strzok's cavalier use of them. Well, I think what we're finding is that there was a, a large problem in the Department of Justice, uh, especially prior to this administration. We've seen it now cataloged in how they uh, adjusted things, how the you know the former Attorney General you know actually uh, had the information, the Clinton email scandals. We just see all this coming forward. But here's one good thing: his name is Bill Barr. Bill Barr came back to the Department of Justice to get the Department of Justice right. I have every confidence in the world. It, the one thing I can say about him is everything he has ever told me and everything he's told the public, he's followed through. On. That is a man of integrity, and I believe the Department of Justice and all of these issues that we're now finding are going to be are being put back, slowly put back together because of leadership like Bill Barr. So who do you think then is vulnerable in terms of uh, prosecutions? Are you looking at that, uh, the Peter Strzok, Andrew McCabe's uh, potentially facing prosecution? Who, who else? 
I think anybody that was involved in that process right now, that if you see them either gone quiet or they're trying to rehabilitate, you know, through interviews or, or tweets or through op-eds, mm. uh, understand the idea of what Mr. Horowitz is doing and the FISA issues that we have. And they also understand that Mr. Durham is someone who doesn't play around and he's going to actually look uh, to protect the integrity of the system. Yeah. I think anybody who did something, they need to be concerned. Uh, meanwhile, the president and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi spoke out after the hearing yesterday. Listen to this. Got to get your reaction. This whole thing has been, honestly, it's been collusion. It's been collusion with the media. It's been collusion with other countries. This has been a disaster for the Democrats. And I think we're going to win bigger than ever. Nothing was done wrong. This was all a big hoax. We want to have the strongest possible case to make a decision as to what path we will go down. But if it comes to a point where the cone of silence and the obstruction of justice and the cover-up in the White House prevents us from getting that information, that will not prevent us from going forward. In fact, it's even more grounds to go forward. Congressman, she's still calling it a cover-up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think the, well, I think that's just the bigger picture. I mean, you've had a president who has done a, a, a great job. We see our economy skyrocketing. We see our standing across the world doing better. And yet he has been attacked from the moment he was elected in 2016. What is really interesting here, though, is I think he makes that case very well. And we're going to make the case we need to continue what we're doing. And But what I'm seeing in Ms. Pelosi is this. She is being run by others in her party, the, the far left uh, of her party, and the, the with the socialist agenda on the Hill, but then with outside where they only have their only hope Hope is to get rid of President Trump because they don't like him. She's having to try and balance something now in which she has nothing to stand on. Her, the, the, the sand is rolling out from under her, and she's having to now try to appease both bases, those who know that trying to impeach the president will be a disaster, and those who say that the only way they need to do is impeach. And what we're finding is she has nothing to stand on, and she's right now uh, abdicating her leadership by continuing down these conspiracy theories that are proving not to be so, true. So can they actually get anything done? It's been seven months since the Democrats have been in the majority. Congressman, what do you think uh, significance has gotten done? And what about the budget? How, how, how are you voting there? What about USMCA? Well, I think this is what you've actually said right there is, is important. Nothing has gotten done in seven months. I mean, we've put show bill after show bill up here. I think when we look at this perspective of, of what do we need to get done and what do you go home, I would be, a, if I was a Democrat right now going into the August recess, I would have to be really concerned because in 1st of January, you told your base that you were going to do all of these great things. You've done nothing. You told the base that you were going to wait for the Mueller report and then the Mueller report would lead to impeachment of the president. That didn't happen. In fact, it backfired on you. Now you're going into six weeks of the August well, we go back and talk to our constituents, and they've got to go back to the fact that they have a failed agenda, a failed plan, and a failed attempt to get rid of a president that they hate. So, I, look, they got a problem going into this. You have seen the, the trade agreements are still on the table. We've got to work forward to get you know, these things moving. But this, is a, this falls straight into the lap of a speaker who is leading an inept Congress. Yeah, all, all while the public is watching, all in a fishbowl. Exactly. Congressman, it's good to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Marie. It's good to see you as well.